Hi, Odyssey Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an biography drama movie named 3096 Days. The film starts with Natasha Kampusch skiing down a mountain, appearing to be by herself. Lost in her thoughts, she stops at the bottom, and a bunch of skiers go past her, showing that she's not really alone. A guy stops beside her, and their eyes meet briefly. He gets what she's trying to say with her look. They go to the bathroom together. Before letting her in, he checks if anyone else is there. Finding it empty, he stands by the door while she goes in. Natasha is in her bathroom stall when she hears another woman in the restroom, who the man didn't notice earlier. She quickly dresses and cautiously goes to the sinks. Making sure the man isn't watching, she approaches the woman and asks for help, introducing herself as Natasha Kampusch. In a flashback, a younger Natasha is dancing at the bar with her father, who appears very drunk. Her father raises a toast with his friends. As the night progresses, Natasha is spotted wandering outside the bar by herself. She attempts to tell her father that it's getting late and that her mother will be concerned, but he dismisses it with a laugh, assuring her he'll leave soon. The next day, Natasha wakes up to her mother yelling at her to get out of bed. Her mother instructs her to wear the dress she made for her, but Natasha thinks it makes her look fat. Her mother, lacking empathy, just tells her not to eat so many biscuits, highlighting a strained relationship between them. Natasha wears the dress as her mother continues yelling, urging her to hurry because she'll be late for work. Natasha moves sluggishly to the table, showing her tiredness. After a moment, her mother questions her about going to the bar with her dad. Annoyed, she insists that the bar isn't suitable for kids. She warns Natasha that if her dad brings her home late again, she won't be allowed to see him anymore. Natasha attempts to argue, but her mother responds with a slap. Stunned, Natasha silently leaves for school without saying anything. Her mother tries to apologize, but Natasha keeps walking away. On her way to school, she walks alone. Some kids play in a park, but she passes by them. As she walks down the street, a man emerges from a white van and forcibly puts her inside the car. Natasha cries out for help, but there's no one around to hear. On the other side of the street, another little girl is left shocked by what she has just seen. The man brings Natasha to his secure home, carrying her into a small room with only a sink and a toilet. After locking the room, he crawls out through a hole in the wall to where she is, subjecting her to physical abuse. Following the assault, he closes both the wall and the basement where the room is situated. Natasha regains consciousness in the small room, feeling disoriented about her location. She attempts to call for help through the door, but there is no response. Frustrated, she gazes at a small vent in the room that provides air before eventually giving up. The man comes back to the room with a mattress, food, and water. When Natasha expresses her desire to see her mom, he ignores her and closes the door. Natasha attempts to scream for help through the vent, but nobody responds. As the day progresses, it gets late, and she prepares for bed. The lights go out, and in the darkness, she reaches out, calling for her mom. On the third day, the man, Wolfgang, reflects on his actions but goes about his day as if he hadn't kidnapped a little girl. Later, Wolfgang reads a book to Natasha, telling her the story of the princess and the pea. She remains in her corner, eating cookies, and listening to the tale. When the story concludes, Wolfgang plugs in a nightlight and attempts to leave, but Natasha stops him. She requests a goodnight kiss, just like her mother used to give her. After a moment's hesitation, Wolfgang obliges and kisses her goodnight. Meanwhile, Natasha's mother and grandmother are watching the news about their missing child. The news reporter suggests that Natasha's mother has lost all hope, but she protests against that notion. The two sit together anxiously, waiting for any updates about their missing little girl. In the basement, Natasha paces back and forth, struggling with endless boredom. She loses track of time and wonders what day it is before the lights go out, signaling bedtime. Upstairs, in Wolfgang's kitchen, his mother lists off supplies that should last him for the week. She offers suggestions on what he should cook, but he playfully tries to joke around with her. However, she doesn't catch on to his humor, and the two share an awkward exchange, hinting that his relationship with his mother mirrors the strained connection between Natasha and hers. 
Later that night, they watch the news together, and the report focuses on Natasha's disappearance, suggesting that she was likely taken on her way to school. Wolfgang's mother makes a callous remark, suggesting that Natasha is probably facing abuse. Wolfgang responds, suggesting that maybe the kidnapper is just mentally unstable or crazy. One day, Wolfgang is shampooing Natasha's hair when she hands him a letter to send to her parents. As he takes it, he notices she's using too much shampoo, and he complains about its expense. In response, she suggests letting her go. The two engage in a heated argument, with claims that nobody wants her and her parents won't pay the ransom. He shouts that he can't stand tears and abruptly leaves the room, leaving her wet and crying to clean up the mess on her own. One evening, Wolfgang is in the garden, enjoying drinks with his mother and grandmother when the police come knocking. They request to see his van, and Wolfgang complies, albeit sheepishly. He inquires if this is related to the missing girl, and the police confirm, mentioning they've examined several similar white vans without success. Wolfgang's van is now stocked with tools and work equipment, and he explains that he used to work in telecommunications. He engages in casual conversation with the officers while one of them ventures towards the hidden basement where Natasha is kept. They inquire about his whereabouts on the day of Natasha's disappearance, and he asserts that he was home alone. Despite their persistent questioning, he swiftly changes the subject, offering them drinks, but they decline, insisting that they need to leave. Natasha dreams about happier times with her parents when they used to dress up and laugh, capturing those moments with photographs. She's abruptly awakened by Wolfgang, who brings her breakfast. Expressing a desire for a clock to regain a sense of time, he agrees and also installs an intercom for communication while he's upstairs. During the installation process, she questions him about the letter she gave him, asking if he sent it as she requested. He lies and assures her that he did. However, later on, he deceitfully tears up the letter. On day 183, driven by boredom, Natasha engages in imaginative activities, pretending to teach her old clothes as if they were students, drawing on the walls, and even conducting interviews with her clothes. Her playful activities are interrupted by Wolfgang through the intercom. He questions whether she brushed her teeth and rinsed off her plate. In response, she lies, saying yes. However, he insists that she must obey him and instructs her to repeat the words obey me over and over through the intercom. Later, when Wolfgang brings food for her, Natasha attempts to trick him with a fake injury. Unconvinced, he dismisses her and states that if she's going to play with her food, she won't get any, adding that she's too fat anyway. Frustrated, she tries to resist, but he lifts her up to the vent she used to communicate. Wolfgang reveals that it leads to the roof and emphasizes that nobody would hear her through it. He also points out the vault door he constructed, emphasizing that there's no way out. Natasha appears to have resigned herself to her situation, spending her days reading to makeshift dolls and lounging around. However, after four days without food, desperation sets in, and she pleads with Wolfgang for something to eat. On the other side, Wolfgang listens to her plea and responds with a cold repetition of the words obey me over and over again. For years later, Wolfgang persists in uttering the same command, obey me, over the intercom. Natasha, now extremely malnourished, wakes up from a nap and pleads with him for food. Starvation is a common occurrence, and this time, it has been three days since she last ate. Despite her desperate pleas, Wolfgang remains indifferent. To distract herself from hunger, she sifts through the trash and notices her room has become more crowded with a bunk bed, a small heater, and a table in the corner. On day 1695, Natasha is reading a book when her period begins. Wolfgang enters and asks her to sew some of his clothes but reacts poorly when he discovers her situation. Disgusted, he instructs her to clean up, but she lacks the necessary supplies. Requesting to use the upstairs shower, he reluctantly agrees. Stepping out of her room for the first time, Natasha is awestruck by the sunlight in the basement. Wolfgang warns her against attempting anything, revealing that he has lined the windows and doors with explosives. Natasha is brought to the bathroom, where she must shower with Wolfgang watching. On a particular day, Wolfgang's mom is tending to him again. She loads his dishwasher and instructs him to do the dishes. He agrees and sees her to the door. However, she pauses and, with confusion, asks if he has a girlfriend. 
denying any relationship, he is taken aback when she pulls a single blonde hair from his shirt. She explains that his grandma was starting to worry he might be gay. A bit flustered, he reassures her that he is straight. Later, Wolfgang takes Natasha upstairs and shaves her head, a moment that leaves her in tears. Subsequently, the two spend time together in the kitchen. On day 1837, it's Christmas, and Natasha has a radio in her room to listen to. Wolfgang comes down with food, a camera, and a gift for her, an iPod so that she can listen to music in the dark, along with a collection of books for her to read. Despite the holidays, when Natasha tries to give Wolfgang a hug, he protests and tells her to stop. She then asks if she could know where her family is, which upsets him. Wolfgang asserts that he is her family now. As a result, he gives her a new name, Bibi, and, for the first time, introduces himself as Wolfgang. Elsewhere, Natasha's mother and grandmother spend the holidays together. Despite the passage of time, her grandmother continues the tradition of getting Natasha a gift every Christmas. As they prepare a pink sweater for her, Natasha's mother breaks down in tears, reflecting on the day Natasha was kidnapped. Natasha and Wolfgang engage in construction work on his house, tearing down a wall for a new room. When she suggests that it's for his girlfriend, Wolfgang angrily hits a bag of cement, covering her in dust. Despite this, she remains unfazed. Later that night, Wolfgang zip ties their hands together, and they share the same bed. As time goes on, Wolfgang becomes more comfortable with her. He starts going to the convenience store, purchasing tampons for her and condoms for himself, signaling a change in their dynamic. Later, he's at a club with his friends, and he starts dancing with a girl. Initially, he's into it, but as time passes, he becomes uncomfortable and decides to leave. Day 2029, Natasha's hair has grown longer, and Wolfgang has her doing tasks like cooking. However, she's struggling to meet his expectations, and he expresses his frustration by treating her poorly. Despite being hungry, Natasha attempts to eat something, but Wolfgang intervenes and compels her to spit it out. In the upcoming days, he becomes even more unkind, playing mean tricks on her such as locking her in a dark place. Eventually, Wolfgang takes her along for errands, deceiving her by claiming to have a gun and threatening harm if she attempts anything. While out in public for the first time in years, Natasha observes normal people living their lives, but she remains unable to ask for help. Even when briefly left alone in a store, the words obey me echo in her mind, preventing her from seeking assistance. On day 2175, the room that Wolfgang and Natasha have been working on is finally finished. Even though Natasha has been doing most of the work, she pretends to be surprised when he shows it to her. Wolfgang's mom also loves the room, and they all enjoy drinks at his new bar in the garden. Meanwhile, in her room, Natasha is listening to the radio when the announcer mentions that it's been six years since her disappearance. Later, Wolfgang takes her to her new room and calls it the Aphrodite Suite. He asks her to put on lingerie, claiming it's their wedding day. She questions why he chose her, and he explains it goes back to the time they made eye contact at a convenience store when she was very young. He shares how he gradually created a special room entirely for her, and then they become close in a more personal way. Later, Natasha attempts to harm herself by starting a fire in her room, hoping to end her life. The smoke becomes overwhelming, and she extinguishes the fire. In an effort to conceal the smell of the smoke, she tries to clean up the room, but her attempts are unsuccessful. He then reacts with anger, physically hurting her, and tells her she is not allowed to take her own life. In response, she expresses that if she is not allowed to leave, one of them must face a dire consequence. Later, she documents the incident of him hurting her on some toilet paper and places it in a box. The scene transitions to the beginning of the movie, where Wolfgang is attempting to teach her how to ski, but her weakened legs make it challenging to maintain balance. As in the initial scene, he stands watch at the door. She tries to seek help from a woman, but, unfortunately, the woman doesn't understand English and walks away, unaware of the situation. Later, Wolfgang inquires about the incident, and she fibs, claiming nothing happened. Unconvinced, he doesn't believe her and resorts to hitting her. She includes details of this beating in her box of records, which is now filled with papers chronicling the times he has harmed her. On day 2908, it's Natasha's 18th birthday. 
Wolfgang surprises her with a cake shaped like the number 18 and a dress, which she puts on immediately. They dance together to music, and Wolfgang tries to teach her some dance moves. On another day, they work together in the garden, and a neighbor sees them over the hedge. They exchange an awkward greeting, but nothing significant happens. During lunch, she manages to do everything without upsetting Wolfgang, indicating a growing sense of settling down between them. One day, Natasha is assigned the task of cleaning the van, and they work together on the chore. While vacuuming the inside, she notices that the gate is open. Wolfgang, having lowered his guard, leaves her alone momentarily to take a phone call. She seizes this opportunity to make a run for it. Wolfgang returns, but it's too late, she's already gone. After running for help, she comes across an older lady working in her garden and urgently pleads for assistance. On day 3096, the police arrive to finally take her home. Tragically, Wolfgang takes his own life by laying down in front of a train. Natasha is reunited with her parents for the first time since she was taken, and she emotionally embraces them. Outside, the paparazzi awaits her triumphant return to the world. Make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.